Hey everybody, welcome to Ravenstead. I've got an idea for a build today, a watchtower or border fort with a palisade wall. I've got a couple pieces of broken off two inch foam. That'll be the base and main structure of the build. So why don't you watch over my shoulder? Let's get something made. All right, let's get into it. I'm gonna trace out the upper structure and then I want a little pathway leading up in here. So I'm going to line everything out, make sure I've got enough room, and then go to work with the craft knife. Don't worry, I don't cut myself. So we'll just uh, start cutting away sections until we get that nice rocky outcropping shape that we want. So I'll make scoring cuts, breaking off the material that I don't want. As I'm building up this structure, I want to make sure that I have uh, like little platforms for miniatures to stand on. So I get a lot of opportunities for different elevations. Gives the piece some interest too. So I've got the beginnings of the pathway that'll lead up to the uh, tower. It's gonna be a little palisade tower built around that upper block. Get out of here. All right, let's just glue this down. I like to have a mini at hand just so I can uh, keep the scale right and make sure that uh, I have areas, playable areas, where a miniature can stand with a one inch base. So I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, texturing on here with some aluminum foil and then a brass brush to kind of scratch in some stony striations in there. I'm pretty rough with this, just to give it a good stone look. And uh, then I want to pave that path so I'm gonna make some pavers here I'm just taking a rectangular piece of foam trimming it down in irregular shapes and then making little slices so those will be little flagstones that I'll glue into the stairway leading up to the watchtower PVA glue is okay for this but uh, I like hot glue because I can move along pretty quickly You have to just be deliberate. Don't get too far ahead of yourself with the hot glue. And then of course you gotta deal with all the little strings later, but that's that's no big deal. Just pick those off with a pair of tweezers or something. Yeah. Path is complete. I needed a little bit more um, elevation to, to get back up onto that path. So I just added a big flagstone there. Looks kind of weird sticking out, but it ends up kind of working uh, later on. Now I'm texturing up some lumber materials, just thin strips of XPS foam, and I'm just texturing them, giving them some wood grain look with that brass brush. So I'll do all sides and the edges too. If you do it pretty uh, aggressively, it'll give you a cool looking kind of splintered effect too. So you'll see some of that in the timbers. Now it's time to fortify this little hill. Dropping in some timbers. So I imagine this upper piece, they uh, quarried off a couple of the edges. That gave us the flagstones for the path. I like a little story with the terrain as I'm building. And this is going to be the framing structure for the palisade wall that'll go around. Some of this, you know, doesn't make like a real world structural sense. Carpenters and uh, engineers probably frown at this, but we're going for a visual effect. So as long as visually it looks uh, reasonable from a construction point of view I think it uh, it appeals to the eye so we're just gonna clad up this palisade wall and those are some of the planks that we textured up and then I need a little step stone up here so they piled up a few of those uh, flagstones and a nice plank on top of that i will give you something to trip on bust your head later and that was kind of open there between the path and the, the fort. I could imagine uh, somebody stacking up some of these spare timbers here as a little bit of extra cover. I thought about doing like a split rail, but um, 
I liked how it kind of continued into the materials at hand, so using timbers that were left over from the building. Time to black bomb this thing, all the construction's done. So I'm using a mixture of Mod Podge and black paint. That's matte Mod Podge. I don't particularly care for the gloss. Get that coated all the way around. That kind of seals everything in, locks everything down. Any loose bits are stuck down. Now we're going to do a little bit of dry brushing. So I've got that black base, which will give me the shadows that I need. And then this is a little bit of uh, just craft paint. I use uh, cheapo craft paint. That color is dolphin gray. So it's fairly light gray. I want to get a good uh, rocky look to this build. So I'll go around with the light gray and then here I'm really picking out the details with a lighter color. This is parchment, almost a white. And now we'll paint in the, uh, the wood. Kind of tedious work, especially when you've had too much coffee. Um, you know, if your hands shake and you think you can't do this kind of thing, trust me, you can. I blacksmith for a living, so I'm always swinging hammers and filing and doing heavy work, so my hands tend to shake a little bit. Uh, coffee doesn't help either, but just trust the process. I'll paint in these pails or planks. And I'll be going over this whole thing with a series of washes after I get everything base coated and highlighted. Here I'm using some of that same parchment, uh, that really light color that I used on the stone. Uh, and that kind of all ties it in. This is like weathered oak planking, so it's got that grayish look to it. Get in here and get all the details. Really makes things kind of pop out, that lighter contrast and then you can kind of mute it all down with a series of washes so we'll start out with uh, the brown wash that I made this is uh, burnt umber acrylic ink mixed with water and I'll just get that all over over the wood and the stone like I say I want to kind of tie in those colors kind of everything has kind of a frosty look before you get the washes on and it really helps to dull it down. This is a little bit of Vallejo rust wash and I just water that down. It's a nice little contrast. Like the more layers that you put on, uh, the more interest, visual interest is there. Once I get this done, I'm gonna go over everything with a green wash as well. And that'll give me kind of the base of that moldy, mossy, grassy look that I want on this build. I like that little cut there in the back. I imagine water draining out of that all the time. That's cool. That wash just kind of flows through the grain of that wood. Oh yeah, you can see that coffee working on me now. Shaky peat. And that's the green wash is just uh, it's like a true green or real green mixed with water and it is really diluted and once it dries it just gives you that hint of green now I'm going in with some uh, watered down PVA glue and I'm gonna sprinkle on some medium flocking that's woodland scenics medium flocking pretty liberal with that and then just tap off the excess got that little hint of moss and grass. So I'm going to go in different areas, laying in the flocking, going up the wood to kind of make uh, vines and moss growing on the wood. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty cool. This really starts to tie everything in. and You can hide a lot of little mistakes with uh, with the shrubbery and the locking. So if I've got a spot where maybe I see a glob of hot glue or something that just doesn't visually make sense or doesn't make sense in scale of the model, uh, I can just 
plop in some some flocking so here I'm gonna kind of hide that line where the planks meet the rock with a strip of static grass try not to get too carried away with this stuff um, but it does add a lot of interest to the build and then I'm gonna put in some uh, some lichen preserve lichen in here and also use uh, clump foliage another woodland scenics product there we go jam that in there so that's what I'm talking about hiding mistakes you just put flocking and grass everywhere there we go looks cool too in my little fantasy world nobody has a weed whacker they don't use roundup for weed killer so stuff just grows everywhere the horses like it there we go oh, look at that plank back there that thing is rotten somebody needs to replace that I bet an arrow would go right through that all right we're almost to the end I wanted one last little piece of shrubbery in there and then I'll give you guys a look there we go yeah, tuck that in there just right all right Here's the build. Let me spin it for you. Appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you subscribe so you can catch all the videos coming up. I'm going to try and keep these coming. It's a lot of fun. Make sure you leave me a comment. and uh, I'd love to hear from you. Any feedback that you might have or ideas for a build. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Hey everybody, I got a... I got an idea. Yeah, it's gonna be good. You're gonna like it.